Good day, all. This is Turbo Dave here, Performance Corner. Um, we got a question from a guy yesterday, Brian Jackson. Uh, it was actually a good question. We started talking about catalytic converters. Um, you, know, you might notice a lot of catalytic converters fail more frequently these days, um, especially if you have an NA car, so a naturally aspirated car, and you go supercharged with it. Uh, we experienced it with the Nissans and uh, Infinities with the superchargers. We experienced it with the Toyotas. Uh, a lot of the, the Toyota, actually from Toyota, you get the factory warranty. And then they used to have the TRD supercharger kit, which was a Magnuson blower kit basically, and they had their own calibration. Um, they were failing too. They had fail rates go up with the supercharger, but they were factory warranty. But they would only fact, uh, warranty it through the factory for, I think it was one or two times after uh, you know, it would fail. It was like one warranty and then maybe a second and then that was it. So it wasn't as much of a warranty as uh, many had hoped or expected. And the Z's and G's and such started doing the same thing with the uh, with the supercharger. And it's not really the supercharger. Well, I mean, it is. Uh, technically, if it was stock, it would last uh, whatever their lifetime expectancy is. But since they were cut short, they call it because of the supercharger. And what happens actually is there's a substrate. And the substrate inside the catalytic converter is, if you look inside a catalytic converter, it looks like a honeycomb. The honeycomb is inside the substrate, and the substrate is just the, what it's packaged in, basically, when it's mounted into whatever housing that's going to be bolted to the exhaust system. So however they make their housing, however they want it, the substrates and the catalytic, uh, the honeycomb inside is one piece, and then they mount that inside there. So the substrates tend to be a little bit weaker these days, um, probably early to mid 2000s. You start seeing them uh, fail more. Not on the factory turbo cars or factory supercharged cars, but on anything that's NA and then you force, you put force induction on it, you start to see the fail rate go up. And that's all it is, it's just a weak substrate. And that's when you, when the substrate fails, that's when you start hearing the a rattling in your exhaust and if you look inside sometimes after a long while they'll break apart and then chunks will come out and that's what it is it starts at the substrate it basically detaches itself from the from the outer pit case and starts rattling and then it'll break apart as time goes on or it can turn into one big molten piece and just clog your exhaust and then you have some serious back pressure and sometimes on supercharged cars, they can actually create very high boost because it's not able to exit and it's holding it inside the engine. And so you'll see your boosts go up, but your car's not going anywhere. And that's what's happening. It's just trapping uh, the air pressure inside the manifold and inside the engine. But that's basically what's happening with your catalytic converters when you start hearing them rattle and the fail rate goes up because you've supercharged it. So it's not uncommon for any of the cars, any of the newer cars. Yes, if you have a factory turbo car or a factory supercharged car, their substrates are more than likely going to be a lot stronger because they know that they're going to have to replace them more under factory warranty. So just be aware that when, you're, when your catalytic converters go out, that's all it is. It's just that they're a little bit more. And the thing is that when you, when you, have a, when you do the engine calibration, you know, if you're too rich or too lean or have too much timing or not enough timing, it creates heat. And so you getting it perfect is hard. You know, it can be hard. It takes some time and you have to monitor uh, temperatures as well as pressure and stuff. So you have to monitor exhaust temperatures as well as monitoring your AFRs and your and your uh, ignition timing and all that and know where it should be. So all that will help uh, in keeping the cats together a little bit longer, um, but it's inevitable. Um, you know when you're talking about um, adding forced induction to a natural aspirated car. The other thing is that um, he would also ask me about um, high flow cats. High flow cats. Um, I think there's one company that makes an aftermarket high flow cat that's supposed to be pretty good. I don't remember the name of it. Sorry, um, but. You know, the rest of the 99.9% .9 of them, yeah, they're very inexpensively made and a lot of them are made out of country. And so they're gonna have, you know, they're gonna fail very fast. And all you're gonna be left with basically is uh, something that looks like a catalytic converter hanging off your exhaust. 
and it'll be empty, you know, and if that's what you're looking for to drive around on, so if you get pulled over, they can see you have a Kelly converter, then, you know, that might be a way to go. Usually they're not uh, carb exempt. A lot of the high flow cats, they're not actually technically legal. Uh, although they do have a catalyst inside, but the catalyst, like I said, the factories, the substrates are weak and these ones are even weaker usually. And so they, they just fall apart and you're left with the housing. But you know, it can be a good thing because now you have something that looks like a catalytic converter that's doing nothing more but for visual if somebody, if you get pulled over. So there you have it for catalytic converters, why they uh, fall apart on you and what makes them die faster. I hope you enjoyed the video. This is Turbo Dave. Please hit the subscribe button here at Performance Corner if you like it. If you want to see more, let us know what you want to see. And we'll talk to you next time. We have something going on. Thank you. Have a great day.